Joining me now, New York Congressman Richie Torres, member of the House Financial Services Committee. Congressman, welcome back to the Saturday show. I would love your reaction to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen getting very specific about the X date for default being June 5th. Well, the Treasury Secretary gives us much needed breathing room. Um, I am cautiously optimistic that a deal will be negotiated and that default will be averted and that Congress will be called back into session uh, next week. But there's nothing to celebrate here. I mean, this is purely a self-inflicted wound if there ever was one. And the mere threat of a default separate and apart from the act itself is deeply destabilizing to the American economy and it's deeply damaging to our reputation as a country. Both sides have their red lines. For Democrats, it's work requirements for some federal aid recipients. And when asked if Republicans would drop that demand, Congressman Garrett Graves said, quote, hell no. Explain why Democrats are holding firm on this and your reaction to what the congressman said. Look, for me, work requirements are a, a non-negotiable. It would be a death sentence for my district, which is the poorest congressional district in America. Uh, I represent essential workers who put their lives at risk during the peak of the pandemic so that people like Congressman Graves could safely shelter in place. And the House Republicans are now intent on starving those families and their children of food assistance that is utterly unacceptable to us as Democrats. And the Republicans have no real commitment to reducing to debt. Uh, the Republicans have no interest in closing a single tax loophole, have no interest in cracking down on tax avoidance and closing the $7 trillion tax gap in the United States. Their only interest is in slashing the social safety net for our seniors and our veterans and our essential workers and families with children. And that is utterly unacceptable. Congressman, can, can we get, just get specific here? Because all week we've been hearing about work requirements, work requirements. Democrats are against work requirements. Do we know specifically what those work requirements that Republicans are demanding are? It's not entirely clear what Republicans are demanding, but keep in mind that work requirements make programs less efficient, not more. And if there is a recession, if there's a situation where there are more job seekers than actual jobs. Why would you punish people for circumstances beyond their control? Why would you deny them access to food assistance at the very moment when they need it the most? I mean, that would be a crime against the social contract here in America. Have you heard any news about how negotiations may proceed today? Look, my, my impression is that negotiations are proceeding and there seems to be a general confidence that we will avert uh, a default. Mm -hmm. But again, I, this has been a, a deeply dangerous situation. And then the president has been put in an impossible position. I mean, the president is negotiating with far right fanatics who are willing to do something that he would never do, who are willing to sabotage the American economy and the retirement security of millions of Americans. If you're a responsible president negotiating with MAGA extremists and extortionists, you're at a disadvantage. And so the president is struggling to make the best of a deeply dangerous situation. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk specifically about what the details that have been emerging, particularly later in the in this week. Punchbowl and The New York Times are reporting that the White House and House Republicans are discussing a debt limit deal that would lift the government's borrowing cap through 2024, so it gets it off the presidential election calendar, while utilizing <clears throat> excuse me, a mechanism to incentivize Congress to pass all 12 annual spending bills. Is this a framework Democrats could support? Well, I cannot speak for every Democrat, but I imagine if, if, if the ultimate deal consists only of a spending freeze and a requirement that we pass 12 appropriation bills, that would strike me as an outcome that I could live with. It has its challenges, uh, but that certainly is better than the catastrophe of default. Right. And, and to my mind, what is sort of genius about what I just read, that framework, is that it puts the discussion about spending cuts and caps and everything out of the realm of default and into the realm of where it's supposed to be, which is the budgeting process. Look, that, that's exactly right. I mean, we should be going through the normal process of budgeting and appropriations. 
you know, leveraging the threat of a default to extort severe budget cuts is an inherently extreme position for the Republicans to adopt. And we have to keep in mind that we in America no longer have a functioning two-party system. Uh, there's nothing normal about a political party that inspires an insurrection against the U.S. Capitol. There's nothing normal about a political party that holds its own leader hostage, causing the largest speaker, longest speaker vote in 164 years. And there's nothing normal about a party that's threatening to default on America. So we're facing a much more radicalized Republican Party than we've ever seen before. But despite those odds, I'm still confident that we're going to land this plane smoothly. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, you know, Speaker McCarthy and all the votes it took for him to get the speaker's gavel, are you confident that he will be able to rally the votes necessary to pass an eventual deal? Uh, I, I mean, th there's no telling whether the speaker can deliver his, his own caucus, but um, the stakes are so high that I am confident that default can be averted. But again, there's a significant contingent that wants to default. I mean, Donald Trump, who's the leader of the Republican Party, said there should be a default on America unless there are severe budget cuts. Ronna McDaniel, who's the head of the RNC, said that a default would be a political win for Republicans. It would be a calamity for America, but it would be a political victory for Republicans. And even Matt Gates described the actions of his own party as hostage taking. But despite all of that, I'm still confident that we will prevent a default and that the majority of Congress will vote for whatever bipartisan agreement emerges. Mm -hmm. And so then, do you, so then do you expect the speaker to call the chamber back early and recess early to come back to Washington and vote on a, on a deal? Uh, I expect to be back in D.C. early next week.